Hey, my name is Michael Mansell, and in this video, I'm gonna break down what I think about the T669 Fifine microphone. This is an all-in-one bundle that includes the boom arm, the shock mount, the windscreen, the pop filter. It is an all-in-one bundle, but it's a USB microphone that's less than $70 on Amazon. Yes, of course, the links are in the description. Appreciate the support on those links. Let's unbox it first, and then I'll give you my thoughts and some tests, and at the end, I'll give you my final conclusion. Let's get into it. Inside of the box, we do have a little user's guide, which shows you how to mount it. I'm gonna walk you through this here in just a second. Then we have the pop filter. Pop filter has a nice sturdy feeling clamp there. It is double screened. So this double nylon material there. So two pieces to catch all those pops. Then inside, nicely packaged well protected. I always like to see that when companies take the extra initiative to make sure their items are well packaged. These are backup accessories, so these are actually just extra spare parts. Another nice little feature there to provide spare parts, because here is the vibration dampener itself, already fully assembled, but they do provide you with some spare parts. The windscreen for the microphone, fairly standard. The USB cable is a USB microphone, so it can plug directly into a USB-A port on your computer. And then here is the scissor arm. It does feel to be all metal construction, which is nice. It feels very sturdy. It does not feel noisy, which is nice. A lot of times the, the cheaper models, these springs can be super noisy, which is super annoying, especially if you're live. In post, you can always ed edit that out of videos, but sometimes you really can't. Not terribly long, but long enough, especially for this size. My professional ones that I have in my studio are much longer than this, but this this does feel very, very solid, which is nice. Has a 3 8 to 5 8 adapter on here, so it is obviously designed for the T669 Fifine microphone. Of course, we have the desk clamp. This will fit up to 2.1 inches, pretty sturdy. We'll get into that here in a second. And then right here, this is a little mini tripod. I actually use one of these with my SM7B microphone. These are really nice. So it's nice that they include one of these in it if you don't want to, or you're in a place you're not gonna use the desk mount and boom arm. And then here is the main event, the microphone itself. It is surprisingly small. It's much smaller than I had imagined it was gonna be. So super compact and especially for traveling, like I do frequently, and I'll, I'll show you my mobile setup here in just a second. There you can see the 5 8 inch mount right there. And then the windscreen itself attach right onto it. There you go, nice snug fit. I like to see snug fits on these. There it is. And that is everything. Okay, this part is pretty straightforward, but I'll just go ahead and show you. This has to be unscrewed to the thickness of your counter or desk. Screw this and make sure you get this nice and tight up against this edge right here. And then clamp it down, but don't over tighten it because you don't want to bend this out. Just make sure it's nice and secure there. And then insert this end. If it's not going in, just unscrew this a little bit. It's a nice tight fit there. So that goes in just like that. And there the boom arm is attached. If you're going to use the shock mount, which I definitely recommend doing so, you want to actually remove the standard mount that is connected to the Fine Fine 7669 to begin with. And to do so, you're simply going to unscrew this little ring here on the bottom. And then you can remove this piece here. You want to insert the microphone here from the top and then position it away from, put the logo, because this is the front side of the microphone and this is where your voice is going to need to go into. You want to point the logo side away from the mount side. And you'll see why here in a second. So once that is in there, then you can just reach in here. Once you get it started, it goes pretty easily. There it goes. There we go, nice and tight. And now we have it on our shock mount. And this way, if you bump the desk, typing on your keyboard, 
it won't transfer over here into your microphone. Even if you're not going to be using the foam windscreen, I recommend putting it on for insulation. That way if you accidentally drop it, it's not gonna damage that microphone. So we pull in the boom arm here and we've got the 5 8 inch adapter that we need for this. So what I recommend doing is taking this off and inserting it into the shock mount female adapter. That is much easier to do this and tighten it down first and then we'll screw it right here onto the smaller one. If you try to do it both at the same time, it's gonna get a little tricky. And these little notches are for you to be able to grip it in there and then take any kind of a metal object. I don't recommend using a knife, but that's what I have here. So if you just do that and slowly tighten it, don't need to over tighten it at all, attach it onto here and then screw this on until you feel it tighten. Does not have to be super, super tight, just hand tightened. And there we go. Now there's a couple different ways of attaching this. You can do it the way that I did it right here, or you can also put it down like so, and then tighten it up again. Maybe there's a professional audio engineer out there that would tell us one way is better than the other. But for me, I just find it to be more of a visual preference of how you wanna see it in your videos if you are doing any kind of video recording. And then you can also shift this microphone around, but there we have it. I'm really impressed at how smooth this arm is for the price point. The fact that it includes the arm with the shock mount, with the microphone, with the windscreen, and let's not forget the pop filter. And the pop filter is going to clamp onto this arm and then we want it to come around in front of the microphone on the side that you're going to be talking on. So if you're gonna be talking, you do wanna to talk to the front of the microphone. These are not like say the Blue Yetis where there is two different directions or stereo or omnidirectional. It is on this front side that you're gonna to need to be talking to. So make sure that the pop filter is on the front here. So undo this clamp here. And there is a little bit of a tricky thing here because this little rubber thing, uh, just make sure it's locked in there. It will lock in and it stays, but if it's not locked in there, just pop it back in. It'll make your life a lot easier. Notice there is a 90 degree here. So the best thing to do is to attach this directly to a 90 degree on the arm. And just tighten it down. Now we can bring it around, position it, right in front of the microphone. But that there is the pop filter now installed. One other comment here, it is a little bit overkill to have the windscreen and the pop filter. So if you're going to do the pop filter, which I do recommend if you're doing any kind of podcasting or vocal work or even live streaming, that you do have the pop filter in front of the microphone itself. But both of them might be a little bit overkill. And then finally, we just need to connect up the USB cable, which this is a nice two meter long USB cable. Super long, which is nice to have. This end here goes into the microphone itself. So make sure this goes in the microphone. This end, of course, is your USB-A, and this goes into your computer. So this comes here and just plugs directly into the back side. Just make sure that the shape is aligned. Push it in, it's a little nice snug fit. We are all plugged in and ready to test it out. I've got it all set up and ready to go here. And I'm actually gonna test it directly against my XLR microphone that I use connected to a Scarlett 2 Gen 3 audio mixer, which allows me to plug in my SM7B Shure microphone that is using the cloud lifter to get some extra gain using that 48 amp phantom power. So kind of a pricey comparison, but I just, th that's what I use to travel right now. I set it all up. It's kind of, you know, bulky to bring along because I've got all these components. So I'm really curious to see what this thing is going to do and how it's going to compare. So let me put my Audio-Technica headphones on here to really get a feel for it while I'm testing this. And I will record these sounds for you as well. I do have the gain set to mid-range. Up until this point, you have been hearing all of the audio through my Rode Wireless Go 2 microphone that I use for a lot of my travel purposes just because it's so easy and versatile. But right now, 
you're hearing the audio coming directly through the T669 Fifine microphone. This is a sub $70 microphone that includes a boom arm, shock mount, pop filter, and desktop, tabletop, tripod. Really, really a complete set all in one, sub $70. I had to check this out for myself and see what it sounded like. Let me know down in the comments what you thought the comparison between the Rode Wireless Go 2 microphone and the Fifine 669 microphone all-in-one bundle. Just curious to see what your guys' thoughts are. In just a second here, I'm gonna actually test it and let you hear what my Shure SM7B microphone sounds like compared to this. Now, I'm not gonna expect that it's gonna be an exact comparison because we're talking about a $400 microphone and then you add on the XLR mixer and the cloud lifter, you're in it for a good, you know, six to $700 there compared to a sub $70 microphone that you can pack a whole lot smaller and be way more versatile. This is the Fine Fine T669. This is the Shure SM7B. This is the Fine Fine T669. This is the Shure SM7B. And one more test. This is kind of an extreme scenario where I'm outside on a balcony. It's windy today. I have no pop filter, no windscreen on right now. I'm going to put the windscreen on in just a second, but wanted to see what it sounded like here. So this is coming directly through the T669 Fifine microphone just on the tripod mount at this point. Uh, no shock. We do have the shock mount, but no boom arm at this point but this is what it sounds like there. I do have the gain turned back just a little bit below midpoint, just trying to not pick up some of the ambient noises around me. If I turn that gain up there, we're turning it up to midpoint. That's what it sounds like turning that gain up to midpoint. Now the microphone's not as close to my mouth as it was in the previous clips. Now here, this sound is coming through the Rode Wireless Go microphone lapel, which is obviously optimal microphone conditions for this type of an atmosphere where I'm out in the balcony, by the water, ambient noise. I've got a highway, major highway right over here. You're probably picking up as well, potentially. So this is giving you some different comparisons that you might see in normal circumstances or ideal circumstances that you've seen on other YouTube videos. So this is what it sounds like coming directly through the built-in microphone on the 2020 16 inch MacBook Pro. This is the audio sound coming directly from it. So if I look directly at the Mac, Book Pro here. This is me as if I was talking on a Zoom or a video or something like that. This would be me talking directly to the MacBook Pro. So what are my conclusions? Well, I just listened back to some of those audio clips I recorded for this video. And I gotta say, I was really impressed at the quality of this T669. Now it's not obviously top of the line. We're talking about a sub $70 microphone here, but to get everything included, any other brand, I would say, yeah don't bank on it for any type of good audio quality. But I was really impressed with the audio quality that we were able to pick up in this microphone. In fact, right now you're listening completely to the T669. This is not coming through my lapel microphone. In fact, if I switch over to the lapel microphone, this is now the sound coming through the Rode Wireless Go 2 microphone going directly into the SSD card on the camera. Now we're back to the T669. I'm just really impressed that with such a small package, such a price point, that they were able to engineer so many quality audio features built into this. Now, if, if you're looking for two-way audio, uh, various gain control settings, a built-in headphone jack for monitoring your audio, you're not going to find that on the T669. But if you're just looking for some good quality audio at a price point that pretty much anybody should be able to afford, the T669 definitely is the way to go. Now this video was not paid for. I did not receive any money for this review to review this microphone. And I just wanted to really test it out to see is this microphone something that I could even use on the road, on the go, if I didn't want to pack my entire audio gears between the Cloud Lifter and the Scarlett Audio Mixer and the SM7B microphone and all the cabling and XLR cables, that's heavy stuff. Trust me, I know I carry about 50 pounds on my back when I fly places. So let me know what you think. What do you think of these audio qualities? Obviously it wasn't done in a lab. I wanted it to be in real world settings, but I wanted to bring to you guys this T669 and let you guys know what I thought about it. Now there are 
links, of course, in the description of this video. You guys can go get those links and pick this microphone up right now. I did contact Customer Sport over at Fifine and they were very responsive, very, very communicative in terms of answering some of the questions that I had, but definitely go pick this microphone up. If you're looking for a high quality microphone that can sit on your desktop or on the boom arm and you can look like a professional without having to pay that professional price. Appreciate you guys. See you guys in the next video.